Pao. This is Kai Opua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation bringing you another segment of uh, Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. And we're very pleased to have with us today uh, Ke Kai Kapu. Ke Kai, aloha, mahalo aloha. for being with us. Aye, aye, aloha, aloha. Thank you for taking time out from uh, your uh, busyness inside, looking at uh, some of the things that you've uh, created uh, inside. I'm wondering how you wound up doing the things you do. Why don't you just tell us a little stuff, something about, uh, sure. you know, how you kind of got into the things that you're doing, which we'll be going inside and taking a look at in a few minutes. Sure, you know, I, I worked with the hotel industry for, for long periods of time, mm -hmm. yeah, from Napilikai Beach Resort all the way as far to the western, but uh, my main focus, you know, throughout all these years is, you know, staying in touch you know, just grasping on to the ancestors of the past, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. especially knowing who I am and identity, identity of who I am and yep. where I come from. Yeah, yeah. Because I work with a lot of kids, you know, thoughts going Honolulu, you know, with alternative learning kids. And a lot of them, you know, all different type of uh, cultures, mm -hmm. mixed cultures, mm -hmm. but very kolohe. Yeah. yeah? Very sure. naughty, hot hit. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's the way they are. So it's just to focus with them and have them respect each other's culture. Mm -hmm. So that draws me more more tight in, in who I am and mm -hmm. what I do, mm -hmm. yeah? Especially getting involved with so much of the work that I do, whether working with, with wood, bone, mm -hmm. and most important, my stonework. Stonework, yeah, yeah. a lot of stoneworks that I do. So, you know, it, it's this, the feeling that what, what receives, that what I receive from the mm -hmm. ancestors above, mm -hmm. I carry them on my shoulder everywhere I go, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? Uh, they, they sort of whisper to in, in my ears, you know, what's, and what's not, what's yeah. right, yeah, and what's Kind wrong. of a, use a Western term, all of them on your shoulders kind of keeps you grounded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why you I know, need that little movie every so often. You mentioned working with the kids, so, so was that actually in the school system or in well, the community? It was in the school system, educational school system. I was in well, Waipawa Intermediate School, oh. you know, for, for a period of time, and then uh -huh. uh, working with the, the, hard, the hard kids, hard yeah, kids, that, they were called yeah. ordered and whatnot, but yeah. it's just them having this connection with each other. Yeah. Yeah, respecting me as a kumu as well as uh, respecting them as a haumana. Yeah. Yeah, just to have the relationship. Right. Yeah, the wonderful relationship so they can focus away from this television series of, of uh, wannabe, you know, yeah. with yeah. what they see up in the mainland as compared to what you over here in the islands. Yeah. And then uh, with so much of the mixed cultures, you know, at that, you know, at this time today, yeah. you know, you see a lot of, I, I've seen a lot of kids made a big change in their life. Oh, sure. Because when I go back to Honolulu, a lot of them remember me. Yeah. So they come up to me with, with, with so much thank yous and alohas, you know, because mm -hmm. the changes in their lives will be kolohe to what they are today. How did you get from Oahu to Maui? Well, my dad is, uh, he's born and raised here in, in, in Maui. Mm -hmm. He's a Lahaina boy. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he's one of the last uh, descendants right now. Mm -hmm. The ancestors up in uh, the valley that's known as Kawaula. Mm -hmm. So my dad was born and raised over here, and, and I've always, my life, you know, as a homesteader back in Honolulu, mm -hmm. you know, raised up in Papakolea, and coming, coming to Maui, um, wanted to make my home, mm -hmm. yeah, over here, my mm -hmm. wife and I and my children. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, to, just to be here so I could be my, my dad home. Mm -hmm. And today he's home, he's back on his island, yeah. where, where he, he belongs, yeah, yeah I, I, can, I can put it. But by doing that, all my family, and, and they come back home. I still have my sister that still lives up in Papagolea, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and she's there, you know, forever. But she does, she does come home too. Yeah. So it's it's more towards to finding my roots, mm -hmm. yeah, and I found my roots. Mm -hmm. That was important. But getting back, head. getting back to the family, yeah, homeland, homeland, yes. Yeah. So you know, many times I go up to the up up into Kawaula, where where my 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 ancestors are, the Barry, mm -hmm. as well as my dad. Mm -hmm. um, it brings me to the part that. There's a missing in my life. Yeah, sure. The folks who come over here looking for the, to fill the emptiness that they have, uh, you know, they actually came from somewhere. They actually have ancestors. You know, they have a history. They have a genealogy. But it seems like uh, people have to come to Hawaii to find out that there's more to life than just uh, instant gratification and and what you do today and tomorrow. That what happened in the past shapes who who we are. So. When you moved over, did you continue 
in education? Did you what what did you do to earn a living when you came over to uh, my, my moving over here? Like I said, working with the, the hotel industry, you know, oh, okay. coming over here and then uh, mm -hmm. educating so much of the uh, the people from afar. Right. You know, they they come over here. They see the beauty of the island and the beauty of the wonderful beauty of the beaches. Mm -hmm. But one thing was missing was it was the beauty of the people yeah. and the lifestyle of the people. Mm -hmm. You know how the upbringing was mm -hmm. in, in the early years and, and today. There's so many, many places you go to, you know, you just look at the, the, the horizon of, of, of many mokus, parts of, parts of every island that, that, that uh, consists in, in, in the state of Hawaii, that wherever you were brought up from, like I was brought up in Honolulu, yeah. but I felt that my spirit. Well, your roots are here. Well, it's yeah. here in, in, in yeah. the island of Maui, so sure. because my dad and my ancestors were. Yeah. So my, my coming home over here had, somehow I guess you can say that the ancestors had guided me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. to, to my life, mm -hmm. to what's going on today, yeah. for, especially for me. I mean, coming over here, working with tourism, uh, it, it's okay. You mm -hmm. know, there was a couple that was, was placed upon our spell, me and yeah. my brothers and my sister, yeah. from my dad, mm -hmm. to, you know, watch out what you say, too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all of this, we're, we're known to be sacred mm -hmm. in the family, yeah, yeah in, in the old Hawaiian ways. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that secrecy, you know, in, in my eyes was like, Dad, you have to let go of this. You know, you have to release this couple because we need to let the people on the outside know mm -hmm. the beauty that we live. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, though it was rough mm -hmm. in the early years, but today, yeah. yeah, we can make a big difference in today's generation. Yeah. We have children that go to school. I Even today, I work with children today. Mm -hmm. A lot of the schools, Punanoleo schools, they, they come here for me. They ask me if I can show some of my work, bring some of my work, mm -hmm. yeah, to educate the children. Mm -hmm. And this is my love, yeah. you know, working with kids. Yeah. I have more Punas. I get, I get you know, Mm -hmm. Twelve grandchildren of my own, <laughs> and you know a lot of them when they come into come to Papa's Aina up mm -hmm. in Kula, mm -hmm. everything you know there's a big couple in the house because they love to touch yeah. things and you know yeah. and and they know they know in their heart that my Papa had done this mm -hmm. and I educate them mm -hmm. because our grandchildren listen to us more mm -hmm. than my own kids, but you know you love yeah. them on who they are because well. one day yeah they yeah. gonna pick up their ike. Well, that's knowledge. a that's the importance of uh, grandparents or kupuna. Doesn't necessarily have to be the direct grandparents, but right. whoever the elder is in the family that they look up to, you know, it's it's why so often the uh, uh, the grandparents wind up taking care of the children, the grandchildren. Right. Things are kind of backwards in that respect, but I think it's worked itself out, especially in the Hawaiian tradition. You know? Yes, it yes it does because a lot of the children, especially my grandchildren, you know, when they hear so much about Papa talking stuff, so much about the culture and, and, and among people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even I have children from the schools, you know, they ask, you know, oh, then, you know, Anakala, who am I? Mm -hmm. Where am I from? Mm -hmm. And when I look at their parents or their grandparents, mm -hmm. I see the image already. You are a reflection mm -hmm. of your grand, of your tutu. Yeah. You look just like your grandfather, your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is who you are. If you sit down, yeah, noha ana and ho'olohe, to to all the wonderful mo'olelos and, and the mana'o that comes from the kupuna. Yeah. Pay attention and listen. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Everything there. was na na ho'olohe, pahakawaha. So yeah. it's, it's just that you sit down, you listen, you learn so much from the kupuna because once they start to bring out mm. everything mm. Of, their, of their life, their, of the past, mm. that's the most beautiful thing to listen to that you don't want to see being lost. I like to get gra grab them, you know, mm. from the ground roots up. Mm. Yeah, this to acknowledge them of who they are, the identity mm -hmm. of who they are. Mm -hmm. Aole Kanaka, mm -hmm. yeah, especially those that, that's not Hawaiian blood, yeah. they are seeking themselves too. Sure. Especially when I talk with tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, many of them only can find their genealogy can go back maybe about three or four or five generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I know they go farther than that if they sure. also dig deep into their na'au yeah. and find the identity of who they are, where they come from. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame, but a lot of people don't even I, weren't exposed or able to spend time with their uh, even their grandparents right. how much you know i read one time in the united states that uh, at one point and this is years ago the average family relocated like every five years i mean and i'm talking about all over the united states so you know you lose your connection i mean maybe you learn to make friends fast mm -hmm. you know when you go to a new community but it's not the long long time relationships that come from generations and generations right. you know that's the interesting thing about the islands is uh, about Hawaii, you know, like you, you go to one area of an island, like you coming home to where you're Mom, from, yes. I mean, it's like that's where you, that's where you belong. You that's, that's what happened to, to my wife and I. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife, you know, she's a uh, Kauai-born, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we love Kauai so much because yep. we go there, you know, back home to Kauai sure. every year when you have the sure. um, the celebrations at, at the Rich Carlton every year for Prince Kuhio celebration as well as the Aloha Week celebration. Right, right. And uh, I always koku uh, my manao as well as for what I do when the open protocols happens for for, for Kuhio because mm -hmm. he's a prince that had give so much of his love mm -hmm. for the homesteaders of the of, of, of Kanaka, you yep. know, of Hawaii. Yep. And that's what draws me so much to respect yeah, mm -hmm. that kupuna mm -hmm. for what he had done for so mm -hmm. much of us today, yeah. you know, where we at. And being here back home in Maui is was this one a thing that had happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much that had happened for, for both she and I. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that we love so much. Mm -hmm. She had a hard time the first year. Yeah, because well, she had loved so much what she had done back in Honolulu. Yeah, yeah you come out of this big city and uh, you've got to make some adjustments. Huh? Yeah, it's so true. But, you know, today, you know, we, we love the uhane of this place. Mm -hmm. You know, we live by saying that the passing of our kumu, you know, John Keola Lake. Mm -hmm. Aina Keali, Ke Kawa Ke Kanaka, mm -hmm. Mebla, Aina is the chief mm -hmm. and we are the servant to this land. Mm -hmm. We malama na no ka aina ne. Yep. Yeah, Dala aina malama is back. Yeah. yeah, you take care of the environment, the environment takes care Aye, of you. So true. So how did you get into focusing onto the types of uh, traditional artistry? I, I, we'll go inside in a few minutes and take a look at some of the things you make, but how did that come about? Did someone introduce you to it? You just kind of admired somebody else's work? or I, I, I picked up so much of, of uh, a lot of wonderful artisans mm -hmm. of the past. Mm -hmm. You know, Rocky Jensen himself, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's back in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And seeing so much of that beautiful artwork had inspired me more of what's inside of me mm -hmm. that need to come out. Yeah. yeah. So it took some years before it come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because to the, today it's so simple that, you know, I can see a certain piece of wood on a tree that had fallen. Mm -hmm. I have to malambe that tree because I know it's going to be, so, uh, you know, a much beautiful effect yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah, because of the character of, of, of the wood and knowing what, the, what that lao is. Yeah. And when it comes, especially with stone or even bone work, mm -hmm. you know, people love bone work and whatnot. You know, we get so many different cultures over here that does so many different ways and styles, right. you know, Polynesia. Mm -hmm. But I stay more focused in ground roots pertaining to who I am, mm -hmm. and what's in my na'au. Mm -hmm. So I had been inspired by so many. When I started to do my work, my dad looks at me, you know, it was like, you know, this is what the kuponas had done. Yeah. This is what the ancestors had done. Mm -hmm. Stonework, they used to apply pohaku for the building of the walls of our tower patches up in Kawaula. Mm -hmm. You know, we have so much tower patches that, that exist up there that for, for so many generations, passed down from generation to generation. Now, my brother, he continues with, with my nephews to carry on the traditions, opening up all these lo'is and tower patches up right. in the mountains. A yeah. lot of work. A lot yeah, of work. a lot of work. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's the healing. Well, that's it's a life. It's a lifestyle. Yes, yeah. and it's the healing for us to go to back in the tower pass and just to rejuvenate the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is our healing, mm -hmm. yeah, our cleansing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's come from the kai or coming from the upper region of the mountains, that right. the fresh water that flows, mm -hmm. yeah, just to have that that, that healing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, upon us. Yeah, it's. Uh, I hear this over and over again, and uh, people like you who have found your your kuleana or or come into it and recognize it. Uh, very, very fortunate. Um, and we're hoping some of you folks out there who have not yet found that are gonna look around and, and get involved. You know, my concept of a healthy Hawaiian community is you find out as early as possible what your kuleana is and you do it. And if everybody does that, everything's right. taken care of. Right. Everything's fine. There is, there is a lot of kupunas, you know, Many of them, you know, I listen to, you know, we talk with, we kuka kuka, and then, you know, everything's so forgotten, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's so hard because their their children or their the mo'opuna, you know, they go, they don't go seeking mm -hmm. for that for that mana of no kupuna, yeah. Yeah. and then you know, when when they start to hear them conversation with us, mm -hmm. you know, many of us practitioners, you know, really sit down and just enjoy to embrace so much of that mana that come from them, yeah. especially from where they were brought up from. Mm -hmm. My family moving over here in in, in, in Maui, coming back home, uh, I didn't realize I was not pretty much related to 98 percent of the people in Lahaina. <laughs> you know, many of them came out, yeah. you know, out of the boonies, yeah. you know, out of the closets and whatnot, you know, knowing big, that big family, big family. Yeah, you know, so like you go back when you come from the same place and you go back so many generations. Everybody's yes, related. and you so yeah. much embrace because yeah. this is the Ohana way, eh? the yeah. family had yeah. always done that. Oh, this is a loss, yeah. you know. Yeah. 
kind of automatic well why don't we go inside and you can show us some of the things that you're doing and kind of explain what they represent to you you know how they fit in with our past and how they fit in with perpetuating our future sure okay good let's go inside with this is a wonderful event that happens over here every year um, especially being called by by Clifford Naole to share so much about the makamai that, that I do many of the work that I do my wife my wife does from uh, a lot of the la'au that you see over here the merkawa from tools and weapons that was utilized by the ancestors you know back in old Hawaii you know from the ko'e and from our relatives our cousins from afar which is in Aotearoa the toke yeah the yeah. greenstone the punamu yeah, this is known as a toke and in Hawaii we call it the ko'e but yeah. these are tools that you know the, the ancestors with what we utilize for the making and the building of our va'a, our yeah. canoes. Yeah. This is one of my stonework that I do. And um, it's not something that when I go down to the beach and I, I just find one stone, I want to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I go walking around and looking for kupuna, these stones are kupuna yeah. to me. This is my image. Mm -hmm. And I see already what's going is going to turn turn out to be yeah yeah so i just work it to what to, to what she is yeah yeah because that's that's who she are yeah, yeah. She, she's just a kupuna to us to the answer to who yeah. we are today yeah yeah and this is the way it was done in the in the, 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 the old way the early well, we years. talked you know we talked earlier about the the, the shape of uh, the pohaku or the shape of a, a branch as uh, being able to recognize what that what that represents mm -hmm. and then just kind of clarifying it with a little bit of detail work mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a it's a different concept than the way things are created today where they just take a big block of wood and they just run it through a bunch of right. shapers and and, uh, and all kinds of drastic operations to get down to what is actually exists naturally you know like a handle or something for some of this stuff. yes for example this is another one. Oh yeah okay this is this wood over here is uhi uhi. Uhi, uhi, it's yeah. our endemic type of wood lao yeah. that yeah. we have up in the up in the up in the mountains up in the rainforest mm -hmm. and she's carved to the mano also yeah the head of the mano yeah but this is known as a neva this is a club a war club yeah yeah that was used in the in the in the early years of warfare mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah let me show you some manao pertaining to what you see over here mm -hmm. in the early years at the time of the kupuna, when war was to take place in old Hawaii, the Ali would let the Nakos know, the warriors know, mm -hmm. in three months' time there's going to be a war that's going to take mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. So what happens, we go up into the Kuli'ivis, up in the mountains. Yeah. yeah. They spend three months of their time up in the mountains mm -hmm. to make a weapon or a protection that will save their life yeah. in warfare. Yeah. Okay? So these is secretly done. Yeah. Yeah? And when the weapon is done, mm -hmm. Yeah, this would never be seen, but Navahine, mm -hmm. yeah, or the keiki, mm -hmm. yeah, the children mm -hmm. of the household, they can yeah. never see this or even yeah. touch. Not a toy. Yeah, it's not a toy, mm -hmm. but they cannot be seen or even touched because what happens is if they do see it, yeah, if Mama would be very mahao, it's you know, okay. What you doing up in the mountain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, never mind. You know, mm -hmm. there were some important things I had to reconnect my uhani with, with spirit right. with up right. in the right. mountains. They see it. Mm -hmm. He won't be coming home at the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because it's just between the spirit of you yourself as well as the weapon mm -hmm. that, you, mm -hmm. that you make for yourself. This is also known as a form of a neva, yeah. a club. Yeah. One end is a dagger as well as the other end is, is mm -hmm. a stone club. Same mm -hmm. as the mano. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is a neva, but this is a mm -hmm. solid wood, very yeah. dense. You throw yeah. this in the water, it sinks. So that's what I mean. I keep every character of the wood mm -hmm. because when I see the la'au, I already see the image because yeah. it looks like the mano. Yeah. yeah. But now we're not realizing the mano is the most dangerous predator in the ocean. But on land, yeah, it becomes the most dangerous predator yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Because you know for a fact this is going to save your life. This is an unfinished product that I'm doing. This is a stone that um, that came to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a place down in Waihu area. It's known as Kapoho. And when I picked up this stone. I already had revealed the image. Was this one solid piece? Mm -hmm. Only thing I had followed the ridge line. This is the solid part of the pohaku. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So it came out to be the image of the mo'o, which is the tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right now, it's it's unfinished. There's more yeah. work in the detailed work that we'll be doing right. only in the baby. Yeah. In the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's such a small pohaku, but heavy in weight. But this this is what draws me so so much close to my love. Yeah. Yeah, for what the ancestors also had done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything all to stone, yeah. to stone to stone. Yeah. Yeah. Another piece that I do want to share with you is this big guy over here. Yeah. Was a huge pohaku. Was heavy. Yeah. Still heavy today. Mm -hmm. But the image when I first started her was her coming out of the egg. Of the mo'o when she's hatched. Yeah. Yeah. Coming out of the egg. Mm -hmm. Still was heavy. Too heavy. Yeah. So I started to work with her to, to release a lot of the stress, you know, mm -hmm. from the pohaku itself. Mm -hmm. So it's the mama of the mo'o holding the egg. Yeah. That's how she came out, came out to be. Yeah. Yeah. One of our, um, one of my biggest kuleana. Yeah. When, when it comes to the mo'o little of, of so much of what you see, the images. Yeah. Of the enama, the aumakua. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Of the, mano, the mo'o, the mano. mano. Yeah. yeah, that's that, that's part of my family, both my mama's side and my right. papa's side. Right. Yeah. I had to seek for that. Yeah. Yeah, to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, today I embrace that so much. Anytime when I see Pohaku, I'm walking on the beach, you know, they're smiling at me already. Yeah. And I, I see an image. Yeah. The image is one they're more. Calling. Yeah, they call to me. <laughs> so and it's a good calling. Yeah. Yeah. As well as Lono. Yeah, this is one that, that was done for me, mm -hmm. you know, that I had done, that I seen the image of. And uh, Lomo, Lono, it's him himself, you know, mm -hmm. of fertility, mm -hmm. of the Aina, the Mok, you know, just the Moku itself, the, the Kula Ibi is up in, up in the rainforest, mm -hmm. you know, what he provides, you know, for so much of the Kanaka, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the Va'a, bringing down the, you know, the trees up in the mountains, yeah, you know, for the canoes, to, yeah. yeah, for the canoes and all. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the bone work from, Pua'a, yeah, mm -hmm. Pua'a, the Botas, this is a lot of my coverings that I do. Right. Yeah, so I work with all different, we're in the islands here in Maui, mm -hmm. we have a lot of deer antlers, you know, yeah. deer that runs around, you know, axis yeah. deer. Yeah. So I use it, you know, for what you see. Yeah. The Punamu, I have a wonderful relationship with uh, Ohana from Aotearoa. Yeah. yeah. That, um, that brings me the stones and whatnot, yeah, right. just to work with the stones. Mm -hmm. So I have a wonderful, you know, love of what, more of what I do. Yeah. You know, the form of the poi mm -hmm. that you see over here. Yeah. This is more of the kawaii form. Yeah. 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 So, you know, this this took me about three days, stone mm -hmm. for stone, this to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I embrace every part of every island yeah. you know, of what the different styles and uniqueness, mm -hmm. you know, that the kupuna yeah. has, that we utilize, yeah. Mm -hmm. These really are works of art, I mean, but they're also practical. They were actually useful. Yes. Yes. Yeah, for the, catch, catching the uh, yeah octopus. octopus. Yeah. yeah, the the lehu, which is the which is the shell itself. Yeah, that's yeah. what attracts the the hay. They want what's inside the yeah, shell. Yeah, they want what is what's on the inside. So yeah. when they see that, automatic, you know, yeah, many go. times in today you drop them down in the bottom of the ocean floor. Yeah. Sometimes they run in a puka. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe if they don't, they grab onto the shell. Yeah. So you playing, you know, hooky hooky with 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 the with the with the hay himself. Yeah. But she wants the the. the the animal on the inside of the shell. Yeah. So you give them a good snack, she hung yeah. up on. And hook them up on this. Yeah, and then you bring out slowly. Sometimes she needs to herself around the lehu, mm -hmm. yeah, or the luhe'e, and then all of a sudden she comes to you. If you bring her out of the water, mm -hmm. yeah, what happens the many they times, the, yeah, she, yeah, she jumps yeah. back into the water. Right, right, right. So when I'm swimming around and I bring her closer to me, I just grab her. Dad, and dad always tells me, bite me in the eye, because yeah. you know, that's when you hit the membrane and then she just, yeah. Yeah. you know, falls apart, yeah. Well, that's, uh, these are beautiful. I mean, uh, there have got to be a lot of people who would uh, just look at that and say, what in the world is that for? Yeah. And how does it work? You know, but it's, it's just a tremendous uh, heritage in this kind of allure, you know, for, for catching that. Thank you very much for uh, joining us at uh, Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future. Uh, we appreciate the... Uh, uh, Okay, Kai Kapu uh, taking his time with us today to uh, talk about himself, let us know who he is and, and what he does in his community and to show his beautiful uh, 
uh, Hawaiian art. Uh, again, thank you very much. Thanks from the Kiwani Foundation, Voice of Truth, One on One with Hawaii's Future, a segment of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Mahalo and Ahui Ho. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.